So me and old Saku boy got a few walking hours behind us now since leaving Meal Peg Lake this morning. Uh, it's another hot day, but a beauty. We're on the way to the headwaters of Noel Paul's Brook, which is Snowshoe Lake. We got about 25 kilometers to get there. From there, we'll have 11 days left to cover about 120 kilometers down that system and another system to finish the trip. You're determined, hey? What do you think you're going to find down there? So we're chipping along the road and uh, I've been going for an hour then we take a break for 20 to 30 minutes. I had my boots off at the last break. Now I'm just ah, stretching it out, you know, trying to loosen up. You know, the back of my legs and stuff were getting tight. That's it. That old walking by is dirty going, but on the road, but it gotta be done. I'm watching Saku now out trying to catch a fish for supper. Actually, look, he just dragged in a, a rock. Good catch, Sack. What do you got? How are we gonna eat that for supper? Saku, drop it. Now he's eating paper towel. A lot of garbage around here, but it's not fit. What a find off the side of the woods road. Some fresh Newfoundland strawberries. Look at them. They're just far enough down too that they're out of the dust, you know? Zach, come here. He, oh, you found your own, did you? Here, buddy. Come here. Here. Good boy. There's some tasty. Berries all over the place this time of year. It's hard to stop eating. Wow, some real dandies here. Look at these. Jeez. Almost bigger than the ones you get in the supermarket. Look at those. Oh, buddy. Best tasting strawberries ever had. We might stay here for a little while, Zach. Have a lunch. Another side of the road find. We're hitting jackpots everywhere. Fresh raspberry sack. Mmm, they're juicy. Take it easy now, buddy. Mario Lemieux, baby. About four kilometers left to Snowshoe Lake. <laughs> oh my man oh man the boys are killed it's just after seven camps up here now we made it a snowshoe had to jump in the tent here me and sack sprawl back just for just for a bit here why i got a bit of wood there and kettles boiling for supper we marched for six hours and we hammered off 25k. Holy smoke, sack. Give us your paw, bud. You're too tired, aren't you? Good work out there today, kid. Good work.
in sec. Come on. Then lie down. Come in. Lie down, my son. There you go. Good boy. Yeah, you're feeling a little tender, aren't you, sec? So am I, bud. So am I. Top of the morning to you folks. We're here now, fire aside. <laughs> Beautiful morning. And yeah, the old walk in the old road, hey? Uh, it's hard on the it's hard on the feet, you know? Hard on the joints. What we done yesterday. Both of us, you know, getting up this morning was probably the stiffest I've been all trip. <laughs> like the board. And uh, yeah, you know, it's just when you're walking through the marshes and over the, you know, the barrens and some of the areas we were early in the trip and even up the river, uh, you know, it's, I think we get visitors. Hear the generator? <laughs> There's a camp about half a kilometer down the road from where we are now, or not even. Probably a quarter. And I heard vehicles pull up a little while ago. Anyhow, that's another story now. Getting We're not in the deep woods like we were in the Grey River. It's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. Uh, there's woods, roads, and around where we are now. But what I was saying was like out in the barrens and marshes and stuff, like you may it may be more physically difficult to cover a further distance. Like it's hard to cover twenty five kilometers like we did on the road yesterday, out in the marshes and stuff and like I said over the hills and up the fjord, but it's a little easier on the joints, you know? It's softer ground, it's not so hard, but out on the road you're it's just pounding the ankles and the feet and the knees and you know, so anyways, we'll get through it. That's it, it's all part of it. Uh, this morning now, we're taking a little delay here. I'm charging up some of the gear. Zach, you can hear the people over there. I'm charging up some of my gear uh, with the panel because it's been difficult to do that on the move. I had it on the back of my pack yesterday. But as the sun angle, sun's angle changes, it's not it's hard to gather a good charge. So I'm taking a bit of time here this morning and uh, charging up the gadgets, my GPS. Stay here, Sack. Sit down. Sit, Sack. Uh, my GPS and cameras and stuff, because everything's getting pretty low. Uh, so, like I was saying yesterday, I think we got about 120 odd kilometers to get to the end of this trip. And I mean, I think I could finish that because it's down river in probably three days, four max. But, you know, I don't want to rush out like that. Uh, I want to take my time and probably use up eight days, is what I'm thinking from here to get to the end. Hey, Sack. Stay here, stay, no, come in here. Sit down. Saku, stay. Good boy. Uh, he's just curious. But yeah, I think we're gonna take maybe eight days. Uh, I got enough food there. Just enough, you know. And make our way down. Take our time. Uh, I took enough food on this trip for 21 days for each of us. 21 days each, around 2,500 calories a day. Just if you're interested in what we got with us. Uh, I guess if I had any goal to this trip, it was, you know, other than the experience, which is the, the main goal. Uh, another goal was to simulate upriver and downriver in one trip, you know, uh, over quite a distance, you know, 220 odd kilometers roughly, uh, and I want to do it like backpacking with the raft and see, you know, what was, what kind of weight I could take and whatever, just for future trips. So I had around 21 days of food for both of us, 
Uh, so we have enough <coughs> to get by, you know. But I was, I'm thinking like in the future, I'd like to use that 21 days of food and make it last for 30 or 40 days. So I can do longer unsupported treks uh, with, with just the raft and the backpack, you know. Uh, so little things I, you know, I like to, it's always good to have goals and, and whatever else, whatever you're at in life. So that was one of them for me. And of course, if I were to go longer with that food supply, well, I'd be relying more on uh, and fish or game, depending on what season it was. Uh, but I had a lot of weight. It was hard work coming up to the fjords, and, uh, over the country, up the Grey River. So I only, I had a, I fished for a bit with the fly rod in the Grey River, just twice briefly, and had no luck. And, uh, I caught a brook trout earlier on as we got up to the top of the fjord. But I didn't do much fishing because, uh, A, I was absolutely gassed, and B, was I was just observing more, you know, and uh, just taking it all in, the experience, and stuff like that. So, but, you know, on longer trips, I'd get the fish when I needed. We had some some good fishing experiences at Meal Peg, and I could have stayed there for a few days and, and stocked up, you know, if we were running low. Uh, but I had to keep moving on. And But that's it. That's what's going on. I'm gonna give stuff another hour. Maybe I'll drop over and see what the boys are at over there. Uh, but then we'll be on our way across Snowshoe Lake. It's only like a couple kilometers long or something. But it is, it is actually me now. It's coming up on 10 a.m. It's starting to pick up. I can take the road and go around this lake and get into Noel Paul's if it's too windy to go on snowshoe, but I don't want to use the road no more, you know? To be honest with you, unless I really have to, unless I fall behind schedule or something, because the road kind of goes through the country that I'm in now from Meal Peg and... Uh, and it goes out to the main Trans-Canada Highway in, geez, I think it's something like 110 kilometers or 100, you know, 120 kilometers, roughly the same distance we have to travel to get out to the main Trans-Canada. So I could take that if I fell behind schedule or something, or we, you know, knock on wood, we got delayed or there was trouble. But I don't want to, you know, we're going to wait for the winds to die because if I'm in a trip in the middle of nowhere, there's no road to walk around lakes. You wait, you wait for the conditions to get better and then you go on, right? It's no like, all right, bye, let's take the road around the lake. <laughs> there's no roads. <laughs> hey, sack. we got to wait for the winds to die down. But anyways, that's it. I've been yapping now for a while. <laughs> uh, but for now we're over and out hey sack so this is the rations we got left from our 21 days of food we each had I got half a dozen packs of oatmeal uh, about I don't know a third a kilogram of plain oatmeal because I mix the flavored stuff with the plain stuff to add a bit of sugar and some taste to it. I got probably half a cup of oil left, olive oil. And I got one, two, three, four. So there's two rices, two sidekicks, uh, instant, a bag of instant potatoes, uh, a bag of chili, my own dehydrated chili there, and a bag of Mr. Noodles. There's a few bars in the bag, cliff bars and sesame seed bars and whatever. And a uh, couple servings of bannock in there. And some dried fruits, some oh, some mangoes and some raisins. A couple packs of Lipton cup of soup, tea bags, spices, and getting low on coffee. Not good. And there's Saku's... Uh, a nook shook kibble, high energy kibble. 
the highest calorie density uh, they got. So that's it. That's what we have left. We got enough for probably six or seven good days each, but we'll stretch it out and hopefully we'll get a few fish along the way. Uh, if not, we'll be a bit slim, but that's it. Times have been worse. Hey, Sack. here now down snowshoe lake or actually pond it's called on the map I was calling it snowshoe lake but anyway snowshoe pond hoping to hook a big one now as he makes our way down a couple kilometers you never know you certainly won't know if you don't try Caribou just crossed snowshoe in front of us. We're losing them though, the boat's spinning. So, right to the back of Snowshoe Lake now, it's blowing again. That's all right for me to cross the lake. There's not much water down here at the start of Noel Falls, and I didn't think there would be. But it looks like we're going to be walking for the first bit. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm a bit poisoned about it, but what do you do? I was hoping I wouldn't have to deflate it anymore until the end. But that, uh, that didn't turn out to be true. Sack, you heel. Heel, Sack. Come here, heel. This caribou is not budging. And he's right in our path too. What a beauty. What a beauty. Yeah, he's just standing there staring at us. Holding his ground. What do you think, Sack? Sacco almost got him. He almost chased him. I just got Sacco in time. I'd say Sacco was 15. 20 feet away from the caribou, what do you think, Sack? You got pretty close, bud.
tree now. Down tree over the brook. an eye out for that caribou. Now I don't want him and Sacky having no encounters. Hey Sacky. You're a good boy though for sticking around, eh? Making our way down Noel Pauls. Brook's pretty small though at this point. Not much to her. On the banks of Noel Paul here, I'm after seeing these a few times now. They're called the Hairy Plum Boy. And they're good. It's almost like a raspberry. Just like just like a raspberry, really. Another one there. Couple more there, you want one sack? a bit of a slow pick coming down Noel Paul's Brook. Uh, that's it. You know, you take what you're given and we made it a little ways. Going wasn't so bad. We're sticking on the river banks and some spots it's dried up and right rocky so it's not like we've been in the bush but slow going nonetheless. But over here we got a nice little camp set up and a nice dry grassy patch. here. Lovely. Uh, we just seen a caribou darting those alders over there and that's kind of what halted us to stop. And then I looked at the watch and it was just after 6 30. So I said we're gonna take time now and set up camp and here we are. So uh, we'll load the tent with our gear and get settled away for the evening and then we'll go at supper. Hey Sack. Smoke out the flies, Saki. We'll smoke them out, the buggers. Even if we gotta smoke ourselves out. So right here, guys, I uh, threw in the tip of a spruce bough uh, in with my black tea. And uh, I've read about the Inu doing this, and I'm sure other indigenous groups have done it as well but it adds an extra little bit of nutritional punch to your tea with regards to vitamin C that comes out of the spruce needles uh, and it adds some extra flavor too because black tea can get old after a while when you don't got milk and sugar out in the woods well I don't anyways but you can throw Labrador tea in there that's another one and uh, the same thing adds a nutritional value and some nice flavor so cheers So tonight for supper, it's my last bag of chili. Uh, nice and easy though, just throw it in there and let it rehydrate. So I, it's been, what, wow, jeez. Oh, I'd say um, at least a month, early G July, when I dehydrated that chili. So I put it in there, I gave it a stir, 
Uh, that's almost a bit too much water, but I don't mind a soupy chili out here because I need the extra water. That's fine by me. So I'll add a bit of olive oil now in a bit once it rehydrates and uh, it'll be fit for the belly. And old Saki just had to feed over her. Didn't you say? How was supper? Pretty good or what? Oh yeah. Flies have died off now since that fire got going. Nothing wrong with that. So I just put the cover on top of the chili and I'll just lay it here on this rock next to the fire so it'll get a bit of heat. Yeah, I'll keep that there for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. Usually 10 is good. Sometimes I've taken it off after 6 or 7 and eaten it half hard. I was that hungry. <laughs> right? It all tastes good when you're starving. Not actually starving, but real hungry. Anyways, out comes the tea bag and the spruce needles. That's strong enough for me. Actually, I'll put the tea bag in there and give it a good squeeze. Give it a nice squeeze just to strengthen it up a bit. This is nice after a long day because all I got is coffee, tea, and and water. You know, when I drink, I've been drinking water all day long, and that's usually the way it is. So it's nice to get something with a bit of flavor in you when you get to the camp. <sighs> yeah, I'm sure you know what I mean. You know, when you're out hiking and beating around, and a lot of times you're just drinking water. You know, you're out for a week. Does you know? four or five days, doesn't have to be that long. Now, don't get me wrong, <laughs> when you're thirsty, water is amazing. I'm out there today just slugging it, because I'm that thirsty, and it's like, you really appreciate water. I think we take it for granted uh, back at home. You know, how often I drink my water throughout the day, three or four cups. I certainly don't get the eight in, the, the eight they say you should have but it doesn't taste as good as it tastes out here when you're working hard all day, so. Everything tastes better, and all the, you know, everything. Whatever you drink, whatever you eat, when you put in a big effort, it all tastes good. Oh, some good, some good tea. Anyways, that's about it from us for the evening. <coughs> Sit back now and enjoy the, the calmness and, and the peacefulness that's uh, with us right now on the side of Noel Paul's Brook. Hey, Zach. It's wonderful, isn't it? You can just hear a trickle of the brook. Wind's dying off. Sun's tucking away. And this is my favorite part of the day, really. It's all good, but to sit back and let the evening settle in. It's just about silent, but not silent. You know, there's a few sounds, a few animals, a few birds. The wind, the bushes, but that's all I want. So that's what the evening is, sitting back and taking it in. Because soon enough, it'll be loud when I get back into the city. And that's fine too. I need a bit of both in my life, but... This is what I really love. Right here, right now.
We'll get him in the fall, sack buddy. We'll get him in the fall. What are you saying over there, sack? few creeping snowberries here on break. They grow down in these little branches that have kind of leaves uh, right low to the ground in by the moss and they're a sweet minty little treat. I wouldn't say too sweet I guess but a nice minty treat. Sack you find them yet? I don't, I don't know if Sack has tried one before. Well, I'm a little steamed up here. Anyways, down the hatch with the creeping snowberries. Mmm. Yeah, they're real nice. They do kind of, kind of got a, a sweetness to it, along with the mint. Anyways, nice little treat goes along well with a cliff bar. <laughs> So we're making a day out of it. Uh, we just made our way a nice ways down through a rocky, dried up section of Noel Paul's Brook. You know, that's the way it is now. It's been a dry summer, July, August. You know, not much you can do about it. Uh, but we're still high up in the system. And once we came out, we came out to Lake Douglas, which we're on the side of now. And boy, did the winds pick up in a hurry. It was a bit of a pandemonium out there. Uh, it started off okay. But once we worked down and the winds had time to build up, we pulled off here on the peninsula. And uh, we had to be very cautious about it. So Noel Paul's exit exits Lake Douglas here at the back end. Another little ways down. I don't want to go back out into the wind. Uh, but I'd say it's dried up anyways. And I don't want to deal with that either. So hopefully there'll be more water further down the system. Uh, but we don't know, so we'll see what happens. I don't want to be walking the dried up river. Uh, so, we'll play our cards how we got to play them and see what happens. We're down past Lake Douglas now and it's still dried up. No hopes of getting a raft down there. Hey, Sack. Sack, what do you think? Oh, 
I was going along, put my head down, picked it up, and Saku's bag was gone. So, now I'm on the way back looking for it. Saku, where did that go? We came, we were coming down Noel Paul's, and then we got into the bush here a little bit, into a marsh on the side because the shoreline got just a tad deep. So it's in here somewhere. I'm just, I can't remember. We, we weaved our way through here. It's gonna pour rain soon, I think. Thunder been going the last little bit. So, you gotta find us now. Zach, where's your bag? I don't think he's that far back. Come on. Where in the name of God is this to? Bingo. That's the second time for that now, Sack. That's it, hey, not much you can do about it, is there? Rough terrain. Lord dines. Anyways, got that back. We can continue on in peace. Come here, Sack, we'll put this on you now. Here, buddy. Come here. Strap to get loose, eh? Uh, there's little buckles here, and where the buckles go in, the hole is starting to widen. It used to be a tight fit, now it's loose. So, Sack, this might be the last trip for you in this bag, buddy. It's been through a lot with you. It might be the end. All right, Zach, straight ahead here now. The day's coming to an end. It's coming to an end. Okay, it's just past 7 p.m. here on Haven Steady. We're looking for a campsite now. And, uh... I don't know. There's some nice woods up there that would be nice and sheltered and easy access to wood, but the growth of alders is intense. Some of those are like 20 feet high. So I don't really want to go bushwhacking through there like the Amazon trying to get up there. So I might just maintain ourselves with a bit of driftwood here that I got and put the tent here. The spot is dry. Uh, I managed to forge my way in through the alders, actually a little ways down shore to get a bit of firewood to get us started. But uh, it's bumpier than a camel's back in or so. We're going to stay out here at this nice site. Everything's all stowed away for the evening. Hey, Sack. Come for food now, isn't it? Hey. Zach's taking a little end of the day snooze as he usually does when I put the tent up. And uh, gotta get a fire going right over here on the beach now. Yeah. Not bad at all, boss. Rain's coming down hard tonight. I knew it was coming. There was thunder and lightning, and now we got this. Nice way to put you to sleep. What do you think, Zach? Zach's been out like a light for a while. <laughs> uh, what a way to end the day. New day, sack boy. What are we looking at here? Looks nice. That wind's crisp, so crisp and cool. Come on, buddy, go have a look. 
Creek today. Yeah, that's some kind of stretch that was. It's a stretch of a hard looking boy, Sack. Yeah, the shoe. Oh, my turn. Ah. Oh, it's not so bad as it's Sack. Like. Once you get up on the move. And it is a large day here in Newfoundland. Just built a little fire. Coffee will be in the cup soon. something there to keep the fire going so it stays hot for oatmeal in a bit so back to the old shelter to watch the morning take shape coffee's getting pretty freaking low uh, I don't know probably got three cups left and they're not as strong as I'd like them to be but that's it they're certainly appreciated that's the main thing. That hot cup of coffee is like gold out here in the morning. Same thing. Anyways, let's do one up here now. Wicked, wicked. What are you saying, Zach? You're just chilling out, hey, on the beach. No, no, don't go chasing stuff. Leave the birds alone now this morning. Leave them alone. Zach, you. What is it? What is it? What are you after now, my son? Always on the chase, Zach. Always on the chase, buddy. <laughs> Not working uh, with much for a toothbrush now. She just snapped off. So I got a tip. We'll get by. Working our way down Haven Steady here. Beautiful peak up there. And we were camped just around that little point there. It was a great night. Happy to be back on the move, don't we, say? Always. This is only a couple kilometers long, I think. But it's nicer to float than to walk. Haven steady, that's where we're at. And we're going on up to the brook. Zach, get your little furry tail out of the way, but So it's day 16 or something here, I don't know what it is anymore. And uh, we had to leave Noel Paul's Brook. Uh, it's too dried up and the loose rocks everywhere. I'm afraid I'm gonna break an ankle to be honest with you. 
Saku took a couple of tumbles, so we diverted around a half a kilometer up off the river to the road. And we're gonna take this uh, a little bit further ahead and get into uh, some steadies. So right now, me and Saku, yes Saku, I'm talking about you, uh, we're on the side of Noel Paul's Brook, and uh, uh, we've made it about halfway down the system, but it's, it's been dry as a bone, it hasn't gotten any better. Uh, I was hoping to at least do some paddling, uh, a scattered rapid, but uh, you know, that hasn't in the case other than uh, the couple steadies we paddled in the lake expansion it's been hopeless uh, today we were it got pretty gnarly down by the river so the trail the trail that was on the map it went up into that and it was just a wreck blow down everywhere so let's go road that leads out to Millertown which is a community here in Newfoundland and uh, yeah we're gonna head out there and start walking now and tomorrow it's around 35 kilometers and Heather will pick us up tomorrow and that'll be the end of the trip so we made it you know fairly close to the end uh, we'll fall around 40 kilometers short but that's it. I just like to get out, or we like to get out and make things happen, and uh, and enjoy it all. So, yeah, that's it from us. I don't have much more to say, uh, other than we're gonna make it out for our deadline, and uh, it's been a great trip. It's been a great experience. So, real happy to show you these these parts of Newfoundland that especially early on in the trip that few people will ever get to see and you know you're gonna get to see them and it was an amazing amazing uh, adventure so I uh, hope you're all looking after yourselves uh, and, uh, and getting things done but other than that we'll catch you in the next adventure take care hey say goodbye See those rip off pants? <laughs> Think you can sew them up? I'll give them a sow. <laughs> <laughs>